Hi, it's Will. It's time for us to put a GUI on our uh, volume plugin that we've been working on. And this is a really, really cool part of the Aspic framework. The GUI designer we're going to use is the VST GUI 4 drag and drop GUI designer, which is designed by uh, the VST GUI 4 engineers. They do a lot to design and maintain it, and it is a great tool that we have at our disposal to use in our Aspic plugins. Now we're going to be able to design our GUI right in the DAW of choice. In this case, I'm going to be using Logic, but you can use AX, AU, or VST host on Mac or Windows. It will all run the same GUI designer. Everything will look the same on both platforms. Before we do that, I want to go back and take a look at the volume plugin project. Now this is the project and this is the folder hierarchy. And we spent some time poking around in the source code over here. Uh, we have just been operating on the plugin core.h and .cpp files. But with each Aspic plugin project, you get a resources folder that already has in it a bunch of um, a bunch of uh, knobs and buttons and meters and backgrounds. So we've got a bunch of backgrounds here, half space and single space backgrounds. We've got some buttons and some knobs and meter, uh, on off metering graphics. There is also a file here called plugin GUI.UIDESC. This is extremely important. This is the XML file that contains your entire plugin and that includes all of the ping data. So your whole plugin is self-contained inside of this one XML file. Because it absorbs all the ping data, there's no need to add all these resources to your Visual Studio or Xcode project. That makes it super, super easy. Everything is done through the GUI designer and there's nothing for you to, to muck up your Visual Studio and Xcode project with a bunch of extra files. The one thing that you will need to do is you'll need to know the dimensions of these things. For example, the VU meter here, this is the VU meter on graphic, which is a rectangular green graphic. It is actually 15 pixels across and 65 pixels tall. You're going to need to know that information for, the, for all of the objects that you want to use in here, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as the, uh, as the video goes on. You can always just open this up in an editor and, and get the dimensions off of it, and uh, these will be written on the aspicplugins.com website as well, so you can get it from that. For example, we're going to be using this half space rack ping file for our background. So this is a pre-made background that has this sort of uh, texture to it and uh, the embossing. This background is 450 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall, and that's going to be the background for our, our GUI. So you need to be aware um, of these files, and especially this XML file. As we operate on the, the GUI, we're going to be saving this file right here. So it's going to be important that you know where that file is and you know how to, how to access it. So let me go back and let's uh, take a look at logic. Here is um, our plugin. If I double click on it, all I get is this gray, empty GUI. This is what we've been looking at before, and it's time for us to go ahead and turn this into our full-size GUI. In this plugin, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our control tags and our graphics, and we're going to bring in our um, all of the, the, the graphics we're going to need, and we're going to set up the background. And then in the second video, we're going to add the knobs and the buttons and all the different components and get it all connected up. So the way that this works is you, you call up the GUI for your plugin, in AAX, AU, or VST, whatever DAW you want, you're going to get a blank GUI like this. And you hold the Shift button down and you right click and you choose Open UI Description Editor. Now, UI Description Editor is what the Steinberg engineers call this, and I am, I'm keeping it the same. I'm the one who wrote this little menu item here, and I chose to keep th this the same so it conforms with their terminology. So when you open this, you are going to get the VST GUI 4 drag and drop GUI designer. This is usually only available for VST plugins, and with Aspic, I'm making it available for AU and AAX plugins as well. It's all going to look like this. Now, we need to resize this GUI designer to get it to our liking. It's off the screen, as you can see right here. And most DAWs do not let you actively resize the GUI. Some do, some don't. So to get around that, 
I've added some items to the file menu here, increase and decrease width and increase and decrease height. So I'm gonna call decrease height a couple of times and that's gonna now shrink the height to here and I'm gonna increase the width and I'm gonna get this sort of stretched out to, um, to a size that I like and I feel comfortable with and this is it right here. This looks uh, really good to me. So here's the here it is. Um, right now I'm going to save the XML file and I want to do that after I've manipulated the size because this sizing is going to get saved with the XML. So to do that I am going to choose save as. You'll notice you can't do save yet because we haven't saved it once. So I'm going to go to save as and what I need to, to do now is to go and to get um, this folder. So it's in the documents and it is in all SDK, my projects, volume, plugin, I, project source, resources, and there is the file. So this is the UI description file we were talking about before and I found it and I've got it highlighted and I'm going to save this one. It exists. Well, I want to replace it. Yes, absolutely. Now I've saved it. From this point on, whenever I use the save menu command here, it's going to go and save that, uh, that file. So here is the main GUI window over here. We're going to get this set up to hold the background in a minute. What I want to do first is to set up the tags and the bitmaps. The tags are the control IDs that our, our values are going to connect to. And the bitmaps are the ping files that contain the actual graphics we're going to use to tie all this together. So for the tags, which is this guy right here, now you can always move this around. And by the way, when you move these panes around here and you save, and you save the XML file, that is also saved in the XML file as well. So get this set up how you like it and hit save and that will be saved. We have four uh, enumerated variables and therefore we have four control IDs to set. Those control IDs we enumerated right here several videos back and we want to set up matching control tags 0, 1, 2, and 3. In, at this point we can name them however we want to. It doesn't matter for the GUI designer but I am going to keep the exact same naming scheme meaning control ID colon colon and then the name of these variables. And I'm going to set that up in uh, the designer. So here's the GUI designer. Here are the tags. There's a little plus button down here. I'm going to hit the plus button. And the new tag is going to be called control ID colon colon. The very first one is volume underscore DB. Okay, so I've now got control ID volume DB set up to be number zero. Let's add the next one, which is going to be control ID colon colon. And the next is the mute button, which is enable mute. Hit return, and I'm going to set this one up to be the number one. And I'm going to go through here. The next, uh, the next one is channels. That's going to be the next channel 0, 1, 2, and view meter is going to be 3, so channels will do next. And I'll go ahead and add the tag for that. Channels. And I'm going to make that one the number 2. And then lastly, we'll come and we'll do view meter, which is right here. I'm actually just cutting and pasting because it's easier to do it that way. Control ID, colon, colon, and view meter and view meter is going to be the number three. So here are my tags. Uh, volume DB is zero, enable mute is one, channels is two, and view meter is three. That exactly matches with the zero, one, two, three that I have my parameters here set up for. That's step one. Step two is to get the bitmaps in. I'm gonna click on the bitmaps tab and go to the plus button down here. And here we are. We are in our volume plugin I project source resources. Here are the folders we looked at before. I'm going to go to the backgrounds and I'm going to open up half half space rack dot ping here. And you can see that it ha has added this in to right here. And uh, here's a little picture of what it what it looks like. You can double click on it. 
and there it is, it's hanging underneath the arrow. You can also click on more, and the more will take you and give you a view of it, as well as give you the dimensions, 450 by 100. So you don't have to really remember or write all that stuff down. You can always find it out of our bitmaps over here. So the half rack space is going to be the background that we're going to need. We're also going to need a volume knob. I'm going to get the volume knob from the knobs folder here. And that volume knob is going to be chicken head 2, which is right here. So there is chicken head 2. If I go to more, you can see that the chicken head 2 uh, ping is actually what is called a strip animation. It is a sequence of images where each image is the knob rotated ever so slightly. There are 42, uh, the, the width of this is 42, and there are 80 of these images, and each of those is 42 pixels tall, so it's 3360. But one image is going to be 42 by 42 pixels. We're going to close that. We're going to need a, a, a graphic for our mute button. Our mute button is an on-off switch. So I'm going to use the buttons here, and I've got one called medium toggle switch. I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy in. And if we look at it, you can see that it is a toggle switch in two different positions, up and down. Up is the off, and down is the on position there. It's going to be 42 by 42. Each of these is half of the overall column height right there. We're going to need VU meters. We're going to need two graphics for that. We're going to need one graphic for the VU meter turned off, which is here. And we're going to need another graphic for the VU meter turned on, which is here. Again, if I hit more, it will take me. It says it's 15 by 65 pixels. That's all very, very good. So we've got all the graphics in place that we're going to need. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to bring that in right now. It's actually a logo. And I'm going to add the Aspic logo, which I've already added. It's right here. Uh, this has already been added um, to the folder. I did this before I started the video. There it is right there. It's 80 pixels wide by 82 pixels tall. That's my company logo, and I'm going to add that at the very end. You can add your own logo or you know, ignore it, whatever you want to do. Now we have one more thing we want to do. We've got our control, we've got our tag set up, and we've got our bitmap set up. I want to adjust the size of this to match exactly that half rack space graphic, which is right here. And then I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to end this video, and in the next video we're going to assemble the rest of the GUI. So the way to do this is we need to go up to, um, to the edit menu right here and it says template settings. Now you can see that I'm on the template which is named editor. The outermost template which is the overall view that the user is going to get is always named editor for Aspic. You can change the name if you want, that's what I'm calling it. When I've got it selected right here you can see its size is 450 by 300. That's this rectangle in pixels. I am going to edit this. I'm going to say go to um, here template settings, and it says 450 by 300. I am going to change the width. 450 is already correct, but the height needs to be changed to 100. That's going to be the minimum. The maximum is also going to be 450 by 100. You can choose a minimum and a maximum and make them different values if you want for doing things like having GUIs which open and close. We're not going to have to have to do that. So this is what ours is going to look like. So here is here are the template settings again right here. Over here for the view container, I am going to change this to 450 by 100. So here is uh, the view container. It's 450 by 100 and the template settings for the editor, which is right here, are also 450 by 100. So this is now all set up. I'm going to go back to this and save the editor, and now I'm going to close it. Now I've got my 450 by 100 sized editor here, and this is now saved in XML. I'm going to go ahead and we'll do the next video starting from this point right here, and we'll continue developing this GUI.